Good evening and welcome to the Grammy Heights Planning Commission meeting Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. Roll call, please. Commissioner, Commissioner Bunger here. Commissioner Kaskuski here. Commissioner Work is excused. Commissioner Holler here. Chairman Jeffrey here. Mayor Kearns here. Councilman Panzera here. Director Mazzara here. Director Kelker here. Additions or corrections to the minutes uh, for the August 17th meeting. Right. Is there a motion? Approve. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor say aye. Those not in favor say nay. Aye. 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 All right, anyone uh, here that's going to plan to speak in front of the uh, commission, please stand, raise your right hand. In the affirmative, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I did. I did. Thank you. Changes to the agenda. There are no changes in the order. All right, let's get cracking. PC case number 7 2021, 1241 Fairview Avenue, Derby Heights School District. Come on up. <laughs> First one of these here. All right, well, great. Um, I think, as noted on the um, on the agenda for today, what we are uh, requesting, and maybe a quick introduction. Can you just state your name, Patrick? Sure. Patrick Condren, um, 129 Sycamore, it's Columbus, Ohio, 432206. Uh, I'm Patrick Condren, working with Concordatus. We are at the owner's rep on behalf of uh, City Greenview School District. Um, what we have this, this evening is uh, a request for easement uh, just off of uh, the recently completed staff parking lot uh, as part of the school project. Um, what we presented uh, within our application is uh, an easement write up. OHM has worked on the remainder of the site. It's roughly a three foot by 251 foot uh, strip that is on the west uh, west edge of the recently completed parking lot. Um, perhaps maybe for some easier context, Megan, I'm not sure if you could uh, maybe just go to the next slides here. Next slide down? Yes. straightforward request, but happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Patrick. Liz? Yeah, yeah, sure, thank you. Um, so this is this uh, case tonight is uh, configured as a, a minor revision to the site plan that you all had approved back, oh gosh, a, well, this is July year, more than a year ago, July of 21. Um, uh, there's really not much exchanging. Uh, one of the you know, city and the schools conceptually agreed to uh, the kind of overall site redevelopment plan, um, including having Fairview go through. Uh, however, I'm working through the uh, construction drawings both for the street and the school. Um, it just turned out that uh, schools need a little bit of additional space to fit their parking in and have school bus turning radiuses work and 
down in the drive lines and everything. So um, we have met with them and uh, agreed conceptually to this easement, um, but in terms of uh, process, we need to bring that to you uh, for a recommendation for city council to then be accepted by the city as an easement um, and filed with the county. So it's fairly perfunctory really tonight, but I'm uh, just bringing that to you uh, for them. It's been coordinated with the with our uh, the impact really is that the, the sidewalk is moving over a little bit. We're actually introducing screening on city property instead of school property for the screening for the parking lot, um, and then move the sidewalk over a little bit and narrow the tree lawn. It's still a generous tree lawn. We're still able to use all of the largest shade trees that we want. It doesn't interrupt the street at all. So there's a limited limited impact really uh, to the city right away, and we would recommend approval. Or really recommend your recommendation to council for uh, acceptance. Okay. Thanks, Elizabeth. Is there any questions or comments? Um, can you just clarify? I think in some write up I read that the sidewalk is it getting narrowed up? Did you write or someone write to make room for um, a buffer strip of plantings and stuff? So does this? drawing show that narrower sidewalk or is it uh, that yeah. it has to be updated on here because it doesn't appear like there's a space between the red space and the sidewalk on here. There, so the, those specifics really appear in the city's street plans and those have been updated to include the space for screening and then the sidewalk moving over a little bit. The sidewalk has been made the same width as the sidewalk to the north. The sidewalk to the south is wider than it actually needs to be because we're trying to cross everybody over. The intent in terms of operation is to cross everybody over on the east side, sorry, the west side, to walk towards the school. That's where the 10-foot multi-use path is. Um, it's where everyone will pass all the traffic for the parking lots and everything. Um, and it had been a little wider only because of its relationship to the Eddington there and just sort of how the site works out, not out of intent necessarily. So. We're um, just making the side, sidewalk the same width as the one to the north, uh, and then um, skinning up the tree lawn a little bit to be able to make room for everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How wide is the sidewalk? Five feet. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. Any other councilman? Uh, no, thank you. Are you friends? No, thanks. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? All right. Is there a motion? Um, I move to approve PC 072021, uh, the 1241 Fairview Avenue uh, revision uh, to parking lot allowing for the uh, variance uh, as shown. Second. Commissioner Kaskuski? Yes. Commissioner Holler? Yes. Commissioner Bumgarner? Yes. Chairman Gentry? Yes. Approved. Thanks, Patrick. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, um, Liz, are you yeah. running the show here on this? I can, yes, walk you through. Uh, if you'd like the, um, really the, uh, it might be easier for me to plug in.
both in the commission meeting, uh, I believe, time before last, I want to say it was a track time, maybe it was August, um, as well as uh, in, in writing received a few comments. Uh, so it incorporated those and kind of polished up the report just a little bit. So the changes really are adding this acknowledgement page, uh, documenting the um, schedule for the process that we went through. Um, and then just little tweaks here and there, and I'll kind of just go on through this. Um, it really, it's, a, it's the last, it's phenomenal. When I say run through it, I'm not all the way to the end to the recommendations. Um, Liz, is, yeah. before you get too far, I did notice an omission. Oh dear. Front page, the first page, uh, Councilman Pantera. It's not, not, eight. not named. It's not I actually eight. fixed that from after I sent this out. Yeah. I tried. I tried. I, I was wondering. If the <laughs> mayor it's not a sign. Put, I thought the mayor may have put the kibosh on that and said, I don't, <laughs> want, to, I don't I want to be the only elected official with my name twice. The version on your screen that you'll see it has, it has the name councilman, not the ghost mm -hmm. councilman. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, just trying to make sure credits uh, give them what to do. I appreciate that, Jamie. Yes. Not necessary, but I appreciate it. So, <laughs> I want to run all the way, as I mentioned, all the way to the end to the recommendations section because I think that's where um, we want to really be sure. The rest of it is a little bit process uh, more so, and then the recommendations in the last section is the piece you want to be sure about. Yes, yeah. It's not Sorry to interrupt. Uh, dedicated piece with a 
a desire uh, on the planning group's part for some ground floor retail potentially to draw um, that pedestrian connection um, through and across the tracks. Uh, so th those are kind of the updates to this slide. Many of those were just repeated as you see them from a little bit different um, perspectives on the next few slides. Um, I did clarify here that there was feedback from various uh, folks, the commissioners as well as community feedback along the way that if the uh, massing up closer to Goodale and the park um, could be more of a maximum of four stories, the parts that are closer to the, the, the rail line maybe could be a bit taller than that, so clarifying if that could be a, a, a ground plus three to four um, back along the track versus ground plus two to three. Up closer to Goodale. <coughs> uh, let's see. That was it on this slide. Similarly, um, here again, <coughs> Colleen, gosh. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Between the ragweed, I got my allergy shots today. My lungs are not that heavy. Um, Clarifying that, that uh, opportunity for a kind of knuckle um, at the, the joint where Goodale uh, bends, um, that activated green space, uh, opportunities for other kinds of things to activate that space wouldn't have to be pavilions, could be something else. And then the height um, kind of clarified here. And then also added in these pieces from uh, earlier in the study portion of the, of the document, just um, making clear the, the Imagery, the uh, uh, built the character of the building street and open spaces that were preferred by the community. Um, we're kind of pulling down those particular images from uh, previously in the presentation, and then uh, kind of solidifying the, the recommendations. Um, these didn't really change uh, a lot. Just maybe add a little bit of uh, additional verbiage to, to clarify um, intent here. So that's sort of where we are. Happy to you know, take any additional comments, I guess, but also if you feel like this is close enough to uh, articulating the vision that um, the community has, then the action would be for you all to recommend an adoption um, of this area plan as a, an amendment to the community, the overall community plan 2019. Thanks, Liz. My end, um, yeah, I'll, I'll start off. So um, I actually appreciate some of the options and the comments that we've had through the process. I do specifically think this area is very unique within Grandview in the sense that there are a lot of single family homes around it, which supports some of the greater density of borders or whatever track that could be a park. It borders a significant <coughs> development. And so in that light, and, and, and then on the other side, is supported by one of our biggest park systems. So like, in my, in my view, this is a prime location to add a little bit of density within an uh, underutilized corridor. And so when I look at these, these components with it that are proposed, I, I'm strongly in favor, because I think this specific section of our town can support the growth that we sort of need as a combined city. And, and so taking that in consideration with all of our Current residences being a little further away. Obvious, you know, we mentioned on how traffic has to operate, and that's always, a, you know, something that we can control a little bit, but not a ton. I think this area plan generally takes in, into consideration all the things that we should want as a city, and um, I'm really hoping that the south of Goodale portion leading up to the development is, is an active, vibrant space. Um, and my only critique of currently of the plan is, you know, I would kind of be a proponent of Douglas Street just doing the full wrap instead of having the bisecting street between and if that became more pedestrian. Realizing that some off street parking is kind of there, access to some of that retail corridor could be nice. Um, but in general, I think the overall pedestrian slide that you had previously there is very supportive of what I think Grandview needs and wants regarding our overall area plan. So 
all of those things in light. Those are those are thoughts that I have related to this plan and generally other commissioners. Thank you. Yeah, I can I mean, come into this later, but I think that that's pretty well formed, but I appreciate the rigor and the thoughtfulness and I agree with a lot of your comments about this and the we can have some density and so I appreciate the uh, clarification there of the, you know going a little bit taller close to the, the rail line and stuff. So I think that's really good. I think this pro provides a nice framework with still some flexibility to allow, you know, for it to develop the way it really needs to improve the community. And I appreciate I think it was the last meeting we talked to Maybe it was in the work session we talked about just the pedestrian, the bicycle, making sure that it is connected back to a larger community. So I feel like that's what we're presenting here. So I'm in support. I'm also in support of this. Um, and in some of the sessions, you know, with the city uh, presidents and stuff. So it's great to hear what you said firsthand to uh, all of that. Um, I like that this area. Uh, as Tim was saying, it sort of speaks to the new crossing too. It's it's on the other side of the track, but it's it's starting to speak to the park to one side, and the density, and it starts to feel like it's completing that, and it's helping to erode the barrier of the railroad track and turning it into a positive instead of a barrier, which we know railroad tracks and highways and things like that tend to divide cities up over time. That's why there's this big storage unit across, you know, on the south side of the tracks, a little further down the street, and things like that. And, you know, it just uh, it, it helps break that back down visually. I also like that it starts to relate back to this future future municipal building where it's pulled back and it's making that a little bit of an object building, but also part of the edge and, and ties into it versus being so different. It unites it, but uh, being on the corner, it also is something special. And um, uh, you know, when you do urban planning and, and things, it, it's a it's a nice way to tie things together. Um, the heights are good. I think you know, as it becomes architecture, I'm more curious to see how you know those things develop because um, uh, I think there was definitely people saying they didn't want doubling here. Uh, they wanted to speak more to what Grandview Heights is about uh, the diversity. They weren't all excited about down the street either, where the, the buildings are broken down a little bit, but they're still massive. And so breaking that scale, I think, is important, which I think is articulated, but we need development. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think we, we needed something to look at this area drill down a little bit more and I think the potential development of the, the railroad the deep development of the we call that it's almost like not money at this point but then this can take on a whole different um, feel. Um, I, I still I, 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 and I agree with the other comments here actually here if, if there's an area for us to really lean into this it can be this, this pocket here. Um, Especially as the, the trail develops, I, I'm much more open to, to higher, um, you know, much higher buildings closer to the rail. Um, I think it could, you know, offer some pretty interesting uh, views of uh, the skyline. And, uh, I don't know, just be a different, a different thing to consider. Maybe. So, I, but I, I really like the plan as it's coming together. Yeah, I have one more comment. So, related to the area plan, I assume the <coughs> municipal building site is part of this option, which I think we need to rezone or recommendation to be rezoned in some capacity. Okay, so, <coughs> we haven't gotten to the, the question of rezoning yet. Uh, that um, will be a separate consideration. This is just the area plan. So, but it is within the area plan. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, it could hurt. Yeah, because all of our comments are <clears throat> only focused on the components outside of the municipal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think we're all supportive, or at least what I've heard, we're supportive of the plan and the relocation of the building at this corner. So if it's part of the plan, I think that merits a conversation among us as part of the adoption. 
Um, so I'm curious to other commissioners' comments on that. I, I generally think it's a good location for it. If I could just back up a little bit to a couple of things. Um, one is the, the location, the actual like general location of the building being here was defined in the spaces and places plan from 2019. Okay. Um, so that's already, in a sense, been approved. vetted and approved, yeah, adopted by planning commission. Um, and everything that was in that plan, what I'm trying to get to is, is this. <laughs>
generate some interest, showing that we, we want density in this, in this area. So yeah, it's not a situation of we're trying to put too much density in an area. That might be right. And that, you know, we want structured parking. If we can get, yeah. like, I think that's not ever really been discussed within Grandview except for Grandview Yard. So I think that's that's an important thing that's been captured in this planning, and whether it's possible or not, at least it's internal, and you know that's our preference, and we can let that be. Councilman Green, is there any other? Yeah, thank you. Um, I agree with everything that's been stated, and this is uh, a tremendous amount of work uh, that's gone into this. Thank you to Liz and uh, the rest of the team. Um, just a couple of brief comments. I. I, I we all are aware of this, but just to put it out there again and, and have it just in a unified uh, voice, the opportunity of losing the railway is absolutely enormous. It, it, it just, um, it, we couldn't have planned for this uh, even softly five or 10 years ago. So this is a crazy unique situation and uh, opportunity. But regarding the density and particularly along that what is hopefully going to be a path, the southern portion of this, uh, of the area plan. Um, I know this will be discussed in wiser environments than my head, but I think there's an opportunity to potentially, rather than stick with very effectively flat or square homogenous buildings, to build some articulation within those to represent that it was uh, more of a segmented development of the past, if you will, so that it's not just plain flat. I think a lot of the, from my view, non-architect, um, a lot of the impressions that people have about the corporate building of Dublin or whatever, it's that solid massing that just says, oh, it's a big building. And we have a unique opportunity to, to really uh, uh, take steps to prevent that from happening in some ways. Um, and I agree with the, um, with the possibility of four to five stories. I would even maybe consider the notion that we approach it on a, uh, on a pars either on a parcel basis or in some sort of square footage formula that allows for the variances that I've described so that we have you know, the opportunity to move up and then down or midway to create some variegation. Um, because I think the line of sight is ideal for downtown and, and the, to my knowledge, the you know the Grandview Crossing development was very limited, not necessarily by actual capacity, but because of the uh, limitations of how high they could go based upon foundation systems going into landfill, uh, even compressed landfill. Um, it's not that they couldn't go higher, but it became very very uh, non-cost effective to do so. So they kind of represent that balance between proper reuse of the land, proper environmental uh, mitigation and, and uh, protections, but then also making it you know, as, as basically highest and best use as possible. We have a different situation and a different opportunity with this, with this area. So those are my um, ex officio comments, and thank you for listening. And it might get your name added to this. <laughs> I tried to get out, but you caught it. Mayor Kearns? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I trust the, the commissions and uh, the, certainly the way this has been comprehensive and appreciate staff um, leadership and support staff so work on this as well as the community input. I think it's very representative of this, but I, I, my comments are not as much on the, the uh, plant city planning aspects as the economic development um, aspects of this and use. Um, as I understand this, it is form-based, um, but the zoning will evolve. Is that accurate? Do you think yeah, on where it's going to work? Okay. So um, we're a, a city of 1.3 square miles with, um, you know, a, a fair amount now of commercial office space that um, is challenged because of the pandemic, which wasn't foreseen, really wasn't foreseeable in this way, but it's really tremendous concern. Um, going forward, and is, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussions. I think you know we're doing an economic development strategic plan, and it's really almost a daily discussion. Uh, 
be because it really just needs to play out uh, what our strategy is. But one of those I think de definitely have to have is commercial office space and uh, of the future, the office space of the future is um, not only Class A but Class A plus as we're calling it and you've heard it called and we've sort of latched on to that. And that means really you have amenities nearby. And so this, there's built-in amenities with the park, no question. Um, but in my mind, really, I really think we need to, you know, get more commercial office in there, um, as well as quality retail. I think it's a unique opportunity to be located by a police station. Also, I mean, not everyone wants to be by a police station, but that actually does open up some unique users that may have specific reasons for being there that we wouldn't, you know, otherwise want to talk to. I, I know the development community is aware of those to answer your questions. Uh, there, there are. Sort of I think there's awareness and there's good reception in it. So um, those are just my comments. I don't I don't know that that changes anything. I appreciate uh, the directors adding this last bullet here to encourage office use above ground level. I might even beef that up a little bit. Um, <coughs> and you know, there's probably a lot more discussion to be had on that. But I would again just the touch of that um, from. From my perspective and, and really not knowing that there's a timeline on this particularly with the subject of the the rail line actually becoming vacated we we're talking a lot about it but it could happen in a year it could happen in 10 years we have zero ability to really influence that on our basis collectively i think there's a lot of influencing but as an individual municipality we don't have any any say in that so to speak so i would issue or offer or advocate for as much leniency as can be granted to react to those developmental conditions, necessity market conditions, um, and you know the best factors of development you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, rather than what we would absolutely do today. I think that railway, once that decision is finalized, you know that's when the real confidence is going to step in, and we just simply don't know when that's going to happen. So. It's, I didn't see that specifically mentioned, but like leaving it to those that will proceed us potentially at a time when you know that is actually real, uh, I think is real important because we've had certainly uh, plenty of conditions for applications, situations, proposals that have come to us um, tightly regulated by what this body and what city council's body put in place. So you know being dynamic about that future expectation I think is real important and this is an ideal area to do it for the uh, for the reasons mentioned. Thank you. Well, I definitely want to hear from the uh, public. Uh, Austin. I feel like that. I, I know you wanted to. Uh, the monkey's following the beetles like. Yes. <laughs> you got um, well, Say your name and address. Austin Carter, 1203 Westwood Avenue. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, so I just wanted to say I really appreciate the opportunity to provide input at those two feedback meetings. Um, um, I saw some other things, like in parts of the uh, plan, which is a pretty cool thing. So uh, I just want to say thank you to the mayor, thank you to city staff, thank you to the consulting team who's not here, and thank you to city council and mayor well for affording the opportunity. Um, I have broken it down. I don't want to. We don't want to be here all night. I have some things written. I won't read them all. Um, focus on the two things that are near and dear to my heart. The first one is the plan goal about multimodal connectivity. Um, there's a lot to like. Uh, like love it, love it, love it. Um, and I can talk about some of those and why I love it. Um, so just say that, that I really like a lot of aspects of that. And there's one aspect that kind of when I read it, I was like, hmm. And I just wanted to follow up because this is a forum for that. Um, uh, on page 44, although the pages might have changed, it says, um, with the depth and bike connectivity, uh, with a potential new vehicular connection at Palmer Road, across the trail to Dublin Road. It's also in the guiding principles Palmer Road should be reserved for a potential vehicular connection. And I just, uh, I was hoping to gain a better understanding about the origin of that and the driver for this element being in the plan. 
Um, is this back and forth or can you make sure? If it's too long, we can do it later. It doesn't have to be in the meeting. I don't think it's too long. Palmer leads out to Stevenson. Yeah. Uh, and Piercefield. Yeah. And First Avenue. Um, and the, that, that edge, not only is it conceivable that it could happen because it's uh, at a narrow point across private property, but it's also the edge of a development that has some uh, <coughs> challenges with regard to how the, the roads are going to be maintained. So there, it, this is a fairly um, ambitious thing to even make happen. Okay. Uh, but also would allow for uh, connection past the, the green space that will be in the center of uh, Grandview Crossing. So we connect sort of park to park there and then out to potential future green space and the bike path across the river near where the Eagle's Nest is. So kind of connecting all the, um, all the green and public spaces along that route. Okay. Um, so, like, I guess I would just ask the Planning Commission as an open question whether that's, like, is that something that you guys think is a good idea? Because it's currently, there's no vehicles passing through there. And um, when you add uh, vehicular, vehicular connections, you can induce traffic and actually increase traffic. Um, and that can single-handedly kill the pedestrian and cycling friendly nature of some beginning areas. It adds a car crossing to the rail trail, which is really a tricky, thorny thing to do. Um, so I know it just says possibly, um, but I would just put it to you guys to, to think about whether that is something that the city wants to put in, even as a possibility. Personally, um, I don't believe that that element aligns with our community's stated goals. Um, I understand that it would provide some people an easier way of driving to those places. Um, but my experience is if, if you open up every way that, to easy access to drive, that's exactly what people will do. And it can, it can really kill the pedestrian friendly nature of it. So it's just something to chew on uh, that when I read that, I was like, um, if I were to identify one thing, that would be So thank you for considering that. Um, I won't bore you with some of this stuff. Um, there's no explicit mention of uh, trap, like a desire for traffic calming along Grandview Avenue or Goodale Avenue. Uh, and I just wanted to see if that is something, I don't know about planning, you know, strategic plans, area plans, whether that's something that's even appropriate for an area plan, or if, if it is, if that's something that the Planning Commission, is that something that, that is a desirable goal, that is say this section, is we want to calm traffic. Um, is that the kind of thing that should be included? If so is this an opportunity to put it there? So there is some language in there about that. Okay. Yeah, and I know it's something that has come up in our previous discussions. Um, as more of a, I think as a commission shared those concerns specifically. I know I did, especially with the, what were we calling it, the knuckle with the yeah. term. Mm -hmm. You know, at least you know starting there especially. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily something like a takeaway or a guiding uh, principle or whatever those two summary sheets were. I didn't find it in there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I missed it. Definitely um, was talked about. It's, it was talked about. There, there are there are some references in here to trap calling. You know, I'm sure I can get around right. If, if, if it is something that the planning commission, the city desires, it might be worth putting in. Explicitly, might make our lives easier in the future. Uh, when we want to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely uh, something that we talked about in, in it's a challenge in this area too because uh, this part of Goodale being um, you know an ingress ingress for the yard and the employees in the yard and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to make sure they have um, easy access in and out of this game. But I know we talked about it frequently. There's also this is just the west end. There's also kind of the whole middle that essentially kind of needs a plan. Right. And traffic is linear, so right. I would anticipate it'll be addressed kind of on a regular basis mm -hmm. with the whole the, the whole that would go over corridor. Um, but we, we the city has a, a separate um, a separate I can't think of what it's called now, but a kind of roads and connectivity. 
plan that probably at a certain moment could bear an update um, and identifies more of that this sort of thing. I, I don't think it's a, inappropriate, and if it's not in here, it's probably generally a, a you know, missed, not out of purpose, but out of just missed. Um, but certainly the, the, the idea would be that if we're going to have some um, activity on the street, that the traffic is offline past there. So, I have a quick question related to the Palmer comment. Yeah. Is Palmer one way towards Gilead right now? I know it's a kind of a tricky area. Uh, so, it's two right way. Right it's two way. Right two way. Right to, right 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 to the alley. Yeah. yeah. The one of the challenges along that stretch is that there's no other connections between Grandview Avenue and Olentangy River Road for vehicles. And there's, <clears throat> there's what we know today of Grandview uh, Crossing, but there's um, reason to believe there may be additional densification along Riverside Drive, which actually would be a good thing because it will um, turn that less, you know, take it from being on highway to being something that is hopefully a little slower, which has really been a goal of the city as far back as I can remember um, when Morse did a plan for that area. So um, I think, you know, to the mayor's point, the uh, need to look at this area from a, um, a systemic perspective it is is going well, to be mention of a traffic need for a traffic study. So mm -hmm. um, I would provide in response to that I would provide caution about one aspect, which is something that cities have been struggling with for over a hundred years, which is exactly what you just said about how um, there's only one way across. It could Grandview Avenue and Golden Tangy River Road, and if we add another connection, that will ease the traffic congestion uh, at these other places. Um, and that's not exactly how it works because it's such a dynamic thing that you can actually induce traffic, latent built up traffic that doesn't exist now, which when you put a new pathway will come out of come out of the ether. Uh, and then also people will, in addition to come out of the ether, will uh, intentionally drive more because of the easy access. So um, uh, there's lots of examples of, of induced demand actually making things worse, even though the best of intentions were behind uh, lane widening and additional pathways being connected. So it's something to be very careful with, which I'm sure you will be. So that's just a, a caution. Thanks, sorry. <laughs> Um, the the rail to trail crossing with Grandview Avenue, I know doesn't want to mention it. Is there any? I, I cannot think of how to do that in a safe way. So I didn't know if you guys have wrestled with that or if that's something that could be included in the plan. But I look at that and I kind of like a like, bridge. Yeah, a bridge. <laughs> we don't have a bridge. We're going to have a bridge. That'd be nuts. That's the obvious <laughs> answer. I mean, that's, that's it's awesome. just busy. It's just busy street, and just, I just yeah. would be really worried. So I is is that where you? It's, it's a challenge. Um, anyway. Yeah. Our only bridge. Our only well. <laughs> only pedestrian bridge, anyway. Um, so that's all uh, multimodal Rest connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the next uh, goal that's near and dear to me is the really exciting topic of parking strategies. Uh, so the area plan does not acknowledge how existing parking regulations, such as minimum mandatory parking requirements, are a relic of the past in our in our need are in need of revision. We know that existing regulations produce auto-centric outcomes that are not people-friendly. Without revision, these regulations will threaten the nascent pedestrian and cycling-friendly character of any new development in the Goodale West area. I have a picture of the city of Columbus. Yellow are open parking lots and pink are parking garages. Uh, as an example of parking infrastructure gone awry because of um, regulations and other reasons. Um, so the Goodale West area will be highly accessible by walking, cycling, fingers crossed with the windfall, uh, and busing, blinkers, maybe. Uh, and it should require significantly less car parking than places that don't have these linkages. So to readdress, like, what are the parking requirements? And maybe thinking of this as a place that is inherently not car free, car car less, car light, um, because this uh, 
car infrastructure and auto dependency is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Building too much car infrastructure inherently leads to more car usage, which makes the whole space feel less safe, less pleasant, <coughs> less peaceful. More pedestrian cycling infrastructure leads to more pedestrian cycling, which makes the whole space feel more safe, more pleasant, more peaceful. We must safeguard the pedestrian-friendly character of the space by discarding the aspects of our status quo planning and development that results in auto-centric development. Um, so if Grandview develops a pedestrian haven where people are able to thrive without relying on a car because they have other viable transportation options, they will do just that. If you build it, they will come. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. I'd like to write a quick comment on the yeah. yeah, and, and I do think we talked about parking, yeah. or parking light, or car light, whatever that Yeah. Part, part of what I was describing as kind of a, a lot of um, uh, leniency to future decisions is consistent with that concern. Okay. Um, I, I don't know that we've come to a conclusion on this, but I believe it's been discussed that we may be pursuing, again, this is all very premature, but this is vision planning, and it takes many years to actually bring that to something being in the ground. But zoning that's similar to GCMXD mm -hmm. in a sense that it's its, its own GCMXD. zone. GCMXD is the yard. Okay. Um, it doesn't conform to any of the other zoning environments that we have, which is most of what you're referring to in terms of that that old code requirement that says square footage use, you need to park this many cars. So I just wanted to let you know that that's pretty consistent with what I'm encouraging about deferring to those future situations to allow for uh, better decision making. I think from the form based, you know, three massing saw that we articulated, we're pretty much saying that we want a pedestrian friendly approach along Goodale, right? We're right. pulling buildings back and as proposed, right? right? We want the retail, which necessarily doesn't have to draw cars. We don't need to be like Grandview Ave where everyone comes from everywhere else and needs to go to the restaurants. Most of the uses referenced are not those uses right. for a reason. So I, I think inherently, and then to build on the mayor's comment potentially of having office, that would need to have some part, part of the parking component. But like I think there's probably a lot of flexibility when you start talking about getting its own zoning, which this isn't a rezoning, that those things are addressed. So I, I definitely think as a planning commissioner, we, and I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I personally want to see that be a very intimate part of our community still and reactivate it and then allow the density to operate how it has to. And, and purposely this, this guy is saying, hey, we don't want to see the cars. We don't really want them to come here. There aren't a ton of ways for them to get in. It's already kind of starting to limit that. It doesn't to an extent because there's a lot of roads already there. But that's, I think, as a goal for us. We want to, we want to reduce the, the reliance. Yeah, that's great. And you just mentioned, like, you, you guys have a vision. And that is very clear from this whole process, from this whole document. And I want to uh, commend the, like, it's hard to look at this rail line and have a lot of vision because it, you just look at it. It's like, but it takes vision to, to to see what it could be, and I get the impression that you guys get that, and I appreciate that. The thing that will be difficult is it's 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 easy to have a vision at this stage. It is very difficult in the implementation stage, as I know everyone knows. Um, we have a vision. We said we'd do this, and then we come up to the issue, and it's one specific thing, and we compromise and we compromise, and all of a sudden we're back where we started. So I don't have an answer with how to do that. Um, it's something that communities struggle with a lot. Um, so best of luck, um, but uh, maintain that vision, stick to it, and uh, fight the good fight. So thank you. Appreciate it, thanks. Um, I have a comment about the, real short comment about the rail uh, restaurant. Oh, okay. The from last week. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the plan that was approved in 2017 had um, six bike racks uh, planned as part of that. It was not the whole thing, you know, it's just part of it. Uh, four of them were intended to be between those two buildings. So we, that's two-thirds of the parking, well we, parking, so. We discussed the uh, bike racks in, that, in our last meeting when, when we yeah. read the case and it was something that I think 
staff is going to talk to the developer about. Yeah, we will circle back with them. They, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot more bike racks than originally even planned, just because of who's moving in down there um, and the proximity to the. There's going to be bikes because their bike path is nearby, and because they're young people who are moving in there. So I, I have a feeling it's not going to take us pushing them to have more bike racks, but. Um, so, uh, bicycle person, um, please compel them to put in quality cycling infrastructure. Yeah, a lot of people put in really garbage crap. Um, the stuff in the plan is really high quality. There's something called the Sheffield Stand. It's an upside down U. It's the only bike stand that anyone should ever build. It's easy to lock up to. It's very inexpensive. It's secure. It doesn't ding your paint. Libraries put up these fanciful art things for people to tie their bikes to. Don't do that. Um, so, uh, if you could just make, and a lot of times people will, non-cyclists, <coughs> will put them really close to a wall or really close to one another, and so um, all those things, I think, would be handled by the Planning Commission. I just wanted to make sure to please ask that you do the due diligence on following up on them to make sure that there's quality cycling infrastructure for people to park the bikes. Thanks. That's awesome. Thank thanks, thanks for participating in the, in the meetings. The press. Councilwoman? Hi. Um, Michelle Kozak, 906 Copeland Road. Um, I'm on City Council. And I have been trying to get around to all the different meetings that the city has. And I, uh, I'm sorry, but this is the first time I've come to a Planning Commission meeting. I'll try to come more often. And that was an interesting presentation. And I'm sorry I haven't looked over the document um, before the meeting. I did notice on there, and I was at those sessions. so. Thank you, like Austin said, for taking into account the height along the rail. That was something that I think our group had asked about. And I saw that you wrote in there uh, mixed income on some of that. And I know you're talking about things being fluid, but I would like to see more affordable housing in Grandview, us preserving what's here, and then for new buildings, making sure that we have that component. So I know that's, again, it's fluid, but I thought I would just make the comment if you could look to that. And I was wondering, I know, as I think you said before, it was 40% apartments in Grandview when, before the yard was built. And then are we up to 60% now? What percentage is it? The, the, I have a little bit of conflicting information from different sources. One says 50-50 now, and one says 60-40 now. 60 apartments. I didn't think it was more city. No. So more of saying we have 60 40 right now. Yeah, I will say this was was one of our interns doing some research with the housing. Um, I don't know what it kind of really is, but the person in charge of housing uh, at Morpsey. Um, so I tend to think it's reliable, but I haven't seen the data directly recently. I have seen it, I haven't seen it recently and verify that. But we're certainly trending towards um, a, a pretty high percentage of um, rental stock uh, compared to the average. So. And I wondered if you have considered that with this plan and how much more rental, like the rental property that will be added and if there's a threshold at which you would say we're not going above 80%, 70% or if you looked at that. The, the very specific mix on housing types uh, is going to be a it's going to be a negotiation for sure uh, with the developer and what 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 the overall project needs are um, and what uh, how the city participates. There's a, there's a lot of a lot of specificity specificity to that that can't really be articulated. It should be in an, in an area plan like this. This is an aspirational kind of a plan. The specifics of all of that is going to have to be something that gets worked out with a developer who comes in and interested in doing. A project with us, which hopefully there will be one, but we wouldn't drill down that way that far. And plan to respond like from planning, we're looking at this specific area. I know you're, you're considering the entire community, but like they certainly believe that this is one of the areas we think Grand that can support more rental units, whereas there are other areas that I would not be supportive of that. I well, think it's, it's a contextual for me, a less, less total volume more relation to your boundaries, the opportunities that exist with the existing land and infrastructure, the amenities we're trying to create, how you're supporting mixed-use development. All those things are layering into what, why I would be supporting this plan today. 
and not supportive of this plan and this density somewhere else in town. Um, so I think that all kind of layers into the conversation you're getting at is like, are there too many apartments? And I don't know that that's how I'm feeling. Oh, and no, I agree with you about the density because I think it's the perfect place for that because you're not going to be building up against some single family home right behind you like the situation that we've had in the other parts of town. Um, but I guess I just worry that I think people have trouble affording <coughs> to buy in, even to rent here or to buy here. And then I think as part of those um, discussions, we talked about having some like lower in the front, maybe lower units that were, um, I don't know, townhomes or something that, the, that could be purchased. So I just wanted to mention that too, as so of like putting something else out there to people considering Grandview that is at another price point that they can't afford a home here. Um, but I agree with you on the density. So I don't know if you could make them, you know, like condos. I, I think the first is residential. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the granular so specificity that you're looking that's for. Yeah. Yeah. That comes later. Yeah. Thank you.
I think there's a safer option if you're looking for, for some level of compromise to contain the concerns about what that might mean in the future uh, as far as that full connectivity on Palmer. I think that it's worthy and probably uh, uh, um, significant to include the interconnectivity of this future area and not go all the way to Gravy Crossing. Um, it's a whole other topic and I agree that it's more a matter of study for uh, a full traffic engineering uh, effort. But if you're looking for ways to kind of uh, constrain that potential, because I know the feeling that is potentially occurring out here, which is, well, if we set this plan, then this is what's going to happen. That's not necessarily the case, but I would, again, by, by a certain amount of reality and history, uh, the closer the proximity of time that we proceed with, with an execution of this plan, the better off. The more distant, the more these things will become a little bit out of touch. So I would, I would encourage any level of detailed concerns or um, constraints on concerns to be executed as part of this document rather than to leave it wide open just so you can tell future leadership that this is something that we're aware of and are not willing to make a, a you know, hard determination on at this time. I, I don't think I don't think it should be taken off the table. I think you know, maybe change it from potential connection to consideration of the connection would be a good connection to, to Malta. That way it opens the door of look, we need to study this further more and get more input. Um, you know, because it, it could be something that, that you know, when and if this ever occurs, I don't know, but I, 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 I don't think taking it off the table helps. Yeah, you may need it. And I think the way it's worded here, it, it sort of sounds like this is where we think the car should go, where I feel like it gets more consideration that it will eventually elicit some more feedback and more discussion.
those together if it's a major undertaking. Yeah, I thought that was a very good process. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.